Hello, Zadie friends, and welcome to this week's episode. We are calling this a seasonally geek episode because we are going to be bringing to you all of the December holidays. And this is a little different than what we have been doing previously, where we've been putting the holidays in with our other things that we have been doing for the week, like the books mm-hmm. and the movies and the TVs and all that other jazz, right? Yeah. Normally, we'd be just doing like, what's coming up this coming week? But December has got a whole lot going on, and much of it is going to require your... You're going to need to prepare for it. So we're going to tell you ahead of time. That's correct. So, uh, also, this is the second week we are doing this like a podcast, and that is because we are planning to be launching a podcast uh, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And if you like the fact that we dual post this on both YouTube and a podcasting platform, make sure you comment below and let us know if you like this. For us, it just has better sound. We like the format better, etc. So if you like it, Give us your feedback down mm. down below. Next week, we will be talking about our books, movies, and lifestyle. So don't go away if you're here for that. This week, we are just talking about all the holidays to get you to the month of December. And we're not talking about the big two. Yeah. We're talking about everything else, right? Yeah, because we all kind of know about <clears throat> those two days. But there is so much that a lot of people miss out on. Two really major ones that have been celebrated for many years, but not everybody knows a lot about them. Correct. And of course, alongside with the holidays, we are also giving you TV and movie references, mm. either ones that explain the holiday a little further, or some that are just loosely referenced <laughs> in yeah. these different pop culture things. So we'll be giving you those as well. So I'm excited to jump in. How about you? I am too. This has been a lot of research actually it is a lot of research all Mm -hmm. right are you ready what is our first holiday so on december 7th in 1941 the imperial japanese naval air service attacked a neutral u.s naval base in honolulu hawaii this destroyed four ships damaged 11 killed 2403 americans and royally pissed us off (laughs) This is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, and it marks our entry into World War II officially and ends our long-running policy against direct interference in European affairs. Interestingly enough, we were not the first country to declare war on Japan after the attack. It was Canada. They declared war within a few hours, and we declared war the following day. Way to go, Canada, eh? There are remembrance events held at the Pearl Harbor Memorial, which stream live at pearlharborevents.com. Interesting. So for the reference for this, I have chosen Midway. It is currently on Mm -hmm. HBO Max. I have not seen it, but I think my husband has seen it. Uh, I don't know a lot about it, but it did come up on my search. So I figure if you would like to know more about Pearl Harbor, then, you know, bypass the movie Pearl Harbor and go watch Midway. That was kind of a downer, uh, admittedly. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a downer. So on December 8th, we're going to have a little bit of a pick-me-up. It is both National Brownie Day and National Bartender Day. We couldn't choose. Could you really? Could you I have mean, it together? Because alcohol and brownies seem like right? the perfect combination. In 1893, Bertha Palmer asked a pastry chef to make a piece of cake to be included in the boxed lunches for the ladies attending the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition. However, back then, the cakes didn't have chocolate in them. They were just made with molasses. Mm. Um, And then in 1904, in the home cookery book, they actually had chocolate in it, and that's the origins of the chocolate brownie. If you would like to celebrate National Brownie Day, Eat the brownie, eat the brownie. Eat a brownie. Now, on the other hand, we have Bartender's Day. Now, a long time ago, bartending was a kind of a low reputation as a profession. It's like it's where you went if you really didn't have anything else to do because alcohol wasn't seen very well. But Jerry Thomas, otherwise known as The Professor, established the modern image of a bartender with his book Bartender's Guide in 1862. He also invented an interesting mixed drink called the Blue Blazer, where you take whiskey, light it on fire, and pour it between two glasses to make a stream of fire. <laughs> that um, seems amazing. And that's where we get a lot of the ideas of the modern bartender being a creative professional. 
So I have to take a quick moment to say, if then you hear some noise in the background, it is because our cats decided if this would be the perfect time to start fighting. Yep. All right, so let's talk about some references for National Brownie Day and National Bartender Day. So for Brownie Day, I have kind of a weird one, actually. It is The Great British Baking Show oh, and yum. Chocolate Week. On Netflix, it is season five, episode four mm-hmm. is Chocolate Week. Now, we haven't actually seen this episode yet. It's actually the next episode. We are behind. I'm so sorry. Um, but it <laughs> is the next episode. So, And they do make brownies. So I was like, this is perfect. Something very seasonal to what, watch. Well, what do you have for Bartender's Day? Oh, for Bartender's Day, this is a little funky. I think it's mainly for me to reference a bartender who has been a bartender in two different shows that I have watched. And so I am shouting out to Jake Johnson because he has been a bartender not only in New Girl, but also in Stumptown, which are two shows that I really, really enjoy. And I do not know if Stumptown is coming back. I think it was supposed to before COVID, but I don't know if they're bringing it back. So that's sad. Mm -hmm. But he is our favorite bartender. So yay. From sweets and drinks, we're going to go into something nice and cuddly. December 9th is National Llama Day. Uh, So llamas, they're fuzzy relatives of the alpaca. They live as long as 30 years. They love to hum. Did not know that. (laughs) They're also very social animals and will adopt sheep and goats as part of their herds. Mm -hmm. And if any predators come in and try to threaten these sheep or goats, the llamas will run after them screaming bloody murder. They really will. When I worked on the ranch camp, we had goats and sheep and horses. And oh my gosh, the llama, the llama that we had was such a character. He Mm -hmm. was very protective of the goats around him for sure. Yeah. So, what do you have for us with a llama day? I actually have two. If you are a fan of animated movies, I give you The Emperor's New Groove, uh, because he does turn into a llama. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. And if you are not, and you're just a fan of uh, quirky 90s movies, I give you Napoleon Dynamite with Tina, the llama. And to that I say, Tina, eat the food. In 167 BC, Antiochus ordered that an altar to the Greek god Zeus be erected in the Jewish temple, and that many of the Jewish religious laws be desecrated. This led to a civil war in Israel. In 165 BC, the traditionalist revolt was a success, and they cleansed the temple. However, they only had enough oil to light the ceremonial lamps for one night. According to legend, the oil burnt for eight days, time enough to prepare a fresh supply of kosher oil. In modern times, specifically on December 11th this year, the miracle is celebrated by lighting an eight-tiered lamp, one candle, each day. The menorah is placed in the window as the purpose of Hanukkah lights is to remind others of the miracle of the oil. Uh, And there's a whole bunch of traditions surrounding Hanukkah, including uh, eating fried food like latkes, as well as spinning dreidels for guilt. Um, A dreidel is a top with four sides, each of them having a different Hebrew symbol, which translated out means a miracle happened here. And as the holiday armadillo says, once upon a time, there were people called the Maccabees. Yep. But that is not my reference. My reference is the Adam Sandler classic, Eight Crazy Nights. Mm -hmm. I think that's all I have to say about that. On December 13th, we have National Salesperson Day. And I don't have any notes written down for National Salesperson Day, but instead I would like to make a public service announcement. As you're going through your December and you're trying to purchase all of your gifts and you're trying to get to work and you're doing this and that, you need to remember the people that work in these stores are people too. It's very easy to just look at them and saying, well, they're here to serve me but you need to remember to treat them with kindness and you need to remember that they are stressed out probably even more than you are because all of the stress of all the other people are being layered on top of them i've had many people get extremely irate with my coworkers for things that no one has control over if you find yourself starting to get stressed out breathe but please Don't take it out on the rest of us. I think that's especially important this year with the fact that not only are these people dealing with all this holiday stress, but the salespeople are also dealing with the heightened 
concern about COVID and Mm -hmm. how the numbers are rising. And so the chances of them getting it, just coming in contact with these other people are, you know, exponential now. So there's that added stress on top of it. So please, this year, be nice or be overly nice. Or, you know, just do something nice for the salespeople. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. Oh, and, and you can also order from uh, Amazon. That will probably decrease your stress a lot. Uh, a little bit. Like shopping online actually is is good. And I know a lot of you are saying shop small. Definitely shop small. And a lot of you are also saying, well, you know, they have a job and they're lucky to have a job because a lot of people right now don't have a job. And that is also understandable. But I think overall, we're generally just saying do what you can to minimize your own stress and be nice to the people exactly. that you are encountering in your everyday life. Mm-hmm. Yes. My reference for this is the TV show Superstore because mm-hmm. it does take place in a big box store and some of the things these people do are is totally ridiculous, but sometimes what they have to go through is also totally ridiculous. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought it was a very interesting. I know there are other stores I probably could have chosen, but that one just came to my head like right away. Yeah. Well, one of the other great things is that if you are stressing a little bit on your shopping, you can also just wait a day because on December 14th is free shipping day. This is a day where a whole bunch of different retailers will have free shipping and they'll all post whether they are involved or not on the website freeshippingday.com. The uh, the list is not yet complete, but it does include Target, Staples, American Eagle Outfitters, and Taylor, Aeropostal, Tom's, Banana Republic, Barnes & Nobles, Bells, Bed Bath Beyond, Best Buy, Brookstone, Cabela's, Carter's, Chico's, Charlotte Russe, Coldwater Creek, Crate & Barrel, Dillard's, Forever 21, GameStop, JCPenney, J. Crew, Kmart, Kohl's, Macy's, Overstock, PetSmart, Reebok, Sephora, Sears, The Children's Place, Walmart, and Under Armour. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> For a reference, I tried to find, like, post office movies. But I couldn't find any. So I chose one that makes sense, but is not really about free shipping day. But it is about free shipping day. Mm -hmm. And I chose a movie we've already talked about here called Operation Christmas Drop. Okay. Why? Because they're dropping free presents to these islands. Okay, watch it. It's on Netflix. If you haven't had a chance yet, it's a good movie. But yes, definitely. It's free. Mm -hmm. There are ships involved. (laughs) <laughs> and you receive it at your door. Um, so yeah. I thought that was a, a, an appropriate, although not directly connected to yeah. the holiday. Very good. On December 15th is National Cat Herders Day. Uh, have you have you seen anything about this yet? Not at all. It sounds really weird. Cat herder is not an actual profession, just so you know. This day is dedicated to all the people in your life that manage themselves and others with calm and aplomb, no matter what kind of chaos comes their way. In our household, that's Lainey. She's the organized one, and she keeps us from just being stupid. The phrase originates from the HP Super Bowl ad from 2000, uh, where they compare their ability to serve others as cowboys herding cats. The cat reference was that darn cat. I love oh. Haley Mills. And uh, because they're trying to kind of, if they're not really hurting the cat. They are following the cat so the cat can tell them who maybe the bank robber was who had kidnapped this woman or whatever. <laughs> it's the old one. So I thought cat herder. I thought it was kind of more appropriate, I guess. And now I know why that darn cat was showing up on your Disney queue. Yes, mm-hmm. that is true. December 18th is answer the phone like Buddy the Elf Day. How many is Buddy? What's your favorite color? Yes, this comes from the scene with Elf. And apparently now there's an entire day where we do this. Why do we need a day for this? This seems like something we should do every day. I agree. Yes. I think it's also a very good way to answer telemarketers. Do you have any other kinds of pop culture? Because Elf is not pop culture enough. (laughs) <laughs> well, I did just watch uh, the holiday movies that made us on Netflix, and one of the episodes is about Elf. And there was some really interesting obstacles they had to overcome in order to make this movie that kind of surprised me. So apparently a lot of the people that they had working on this movie, the screenwriter, the producers, the director, none of them had done anything before. And this was like a scrappy little movie that no one really believed was going to take off. And now it is a cult holiday classic. So mm-hmm. watch the, watch that if you have time. I think it was really eye-opening if you love this movie. So December 20th 
National Sangria Day, which seems kind of odd that we have an American National Sangria Day because the only countries that can produce sangria and not say that it's some sort of derivative are Spain and Portugal. So if you have never had sangria before, it is a punch made with red wine and chopped fruit. Sometimes other ingredients or spirits are added. And there's also a variation where they swap out the wine for soda. And this is called ponche de sangria, which is for children's birthday parties. We've had sangria before here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was actually made by someone who was living with us for a little bit. Yeah, It wasn't yes. just like something you got out of a bottle. He made sangria. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a direct pop culture reference to sangria. It, uh, one that I could find offhand. Um, if there is one, please comment and let me know if you found one. But once I did, I did find two movies about wine, both of which are on Netflix. There is a movie called Uncorked. I bet you could tell me what that movie is going to be about. I haven't watched it yet, so I don't really know. But it does have to do with wine. I didn't want to choose... There was There's a movie, I cannot remember what the name of it is, with Paul Giamatti about um, them doing wine tasting. I didn't really want to choose that one. So I decided to choose a movie called Wine Country that is also on Netflix that has basically every woman from SNL during the time of Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. And I was almost like this movie was... Let's get all of our friends in one room and just riff off each other with a loose script and have fun. And that's basically what this movie is. And they're in Napa County. So that's why it has to do with wine country. Okay. The wine as well. Although this movie is not really about wine that much. But it is, I think at one point they do drink sangria mm -hmm. just once. So that's why I chose that one also. December 21st is the winter solstice. Uh, this is the point where the North Pole is pointed furthest away from the sun for the Northern Hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere it is their summer solstice so at this point the sun appears to make a complete stop in the sky for a very brief moment and just about every culture has their own traditions revolving around the winter solstice often involving fire in vancouver the secret lantern society which sounds like a great bunch of people i want to get involved in creates a maze of 600 candles inviting visitors to let go of their old thoughts uh, this year Jupiter and Saturn will be going into a large conjunction, uh, so the, the two planets will be overlapping each other, and the gravitational lensing will cause the light from one to amplify the light of the other. And this is going to be something that we won't see again until 2080. Wow. So for another 60 years, we're not going to have another conjunction like this, and astronomers are calling it a Christmas star. Um, there is actually a special where a guy believes that the Christmas star that the three wise men followed was a similar kind of conjunction. I believe you can find that with a video series called The Christmas Star. Interesting. For my offering, I have chosen a movie in which winter is all the time, mm -hmm. and that is The Chronicles of Narnia. Ah. I love the depictions of Narnia, you know, with the white witch and her sled and her Turkish delight, Mr. Tumnus, Christmas trees and light posts. I mean, I think it to me is just like the epitome of what you think of when you think of like winter not necessarily mm -hmm. the holidays, but definitely winter. Yeah, because in Narnia, while she was raining, it was always winter, but never Christmas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The next day after winter solstice, we have National Cookie Exchange Day. Uh, cookies were derived from a hard wafer, which was used as a travel food. In the 7th century in Persia, they began to make them with sugar, and immediately everybody was in love with them. In England, they're called biscuits, but our word of cookie actually comes from a Dutch word, Kukje, oh, which means a little cake. So those of you who have been, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s might remember this little movie called Troop Beverly Hills, in oh. which <laughs> they have to sell cookies to raise money for their Girl Scout mm -hmm. kind of organization. And they have a competition for who can raise the most boxes of cookies sold. Yes. So True Beverly Hills, one of my favorites from the 90s, I think, is it what it is came out. It is so good. Like, I, it's one of those that I don't know if anybody really knows about it anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I, I sometimes make mentions of it to people that I work with, and they're like, what are you on? But <laughs> it, it is a very funny movie, especially, like, when they go and they're doing the campfire stories and they're telling ghost stories and... Yeah, you know, you'd think it's going to be something horrible, and they're talking about getting permed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So if you are, a, you know, a lover of those oldie movies, and you know, check it out. I was not able to find it anywhere. I think you yeah. might have to rent it 
or something. <laughs> I don't know. I think the version that we had, we taped off of uh, uh, Yeah, of yeah. television broadcast. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. you're right. 23rd is Festivus, and I'm going to have to turn this one over to Lainey. We're going to give you the pop culture reference first, and mm-hmm. that is that uh, Seinfeld has, has this made-up holiday called Festivus. Mm-hmm. Um, so the writers of it uh they actually celebrated it with his own family before they brought it onto the show Uh, it was called festivus meaning excellent jovial lively and it's Um, for the rest of us yes festivus is for the rest of us and when it was brought into the show it was brought in because one of the characters fathers felt like christmas was starting to get too commercialized and so he wanted to create something that was for everyone else one that wasn't directly associated with any particular religion and so when they do this they rather than having a christmas tree or a menorah they would have a simple aluminum pole (laughs) then they would have a feast of meatloaf that sounds tasty (laughs) i'm sorry it just it's kind of weird meatloaf nothing special about this we're just having meatloaf (laughs) and then you would basically take the time afterwards to air your grievances <laughs> i got a lot of problems with you people and now you're gonna hear about it and you just say all the things that they've done to offend you over the year just get it all out into the open the final thing that you would do is called feats of strength where the head of the household would choose somebody else in the household and that person would have to wrestle him or her festivus would not end until the head of the household was defeated which meant that festivus could go on forever if you picked somebody that was weak <laughs> Zeno, get over here. We're going to wrestle. I believe the preferred term is wrestle. Um, since then, it has gotten all over the place. It's actually picking up steam. It's still being talked about, even in 2018. And in 2018, a Newsweek article titled itself, Donald Trump calls troops on Thanksgiving, but ends up having a festivus airing of grievances. <laughs> so yes, so it, it, is, it is everywhere now. <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe get yourself an aluminum pole and some meatloaf and have your own festivus. I'm down. It's also Christmas Eve Eve. Yes. So that seems seems appropriate also. Yeah. Then, you know, after you have your airing of grievances, then you can just give each other presents. So make up for it. Yeah. Because, you know, then there's Christmas Eve and then there's Christmas. We're not talking about those. No. No. We're going to jump straight into... December 26th. Which is also known as Boxing Day, wow. especially if you are coming from the UK, Canada, Australia, several other countries like that. And nobody really knows exactly where the term Boxing Day comes from. Mm-hmm. There's two different theories, and one is that either you would go and put money into the alms box for the poor, for the, for the church as well, on the day after Christmas... Or it may come from a tradition of giving gifts to your servants and uh, to people that wear service industry during that day. And because of that second one, it became a really big shopping holiday in UK. That's that's Boxing Day. Do you got anything for that? Honestly, when I did a lot of research about Boxing Day, the only thing I could come up with pop culture wise is the list of movies you should watch on Boxing Day, which didn't have anything to do with Boxing Day. It was basically all the really popular movies or movies that came out on Christmas that you should watch. So, no, I have nothing for Boxing Day. The closest I ever got with that was, like, a side reference that I can't even really remember that the Prime Minister made during Love Actually. Correct. That's that's all I can remember. However, also on December 26th is Kwanzaa. Now, Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by Maulana Karenga in the aftermath of the Watts Riots in California. It was intended to be an alternative holiday to Christmas just for African Americans. Its name translates from the Swahili word meaning first fruits. And this is done over seven days. It's not just a single day observance Mm -hmm. where they would they would spend each day kind of devoting to the seven different principles of African heritage. Most of the time when they celebrate it's done with traditional clothing, artistic performances, and shared drinks. Everybody would drink libations from the same cup. Unfortunately, due to the decline of the Black Power movement and the commercialization of the holiday beginning in 1997 with Hallmark deciding, hey, why don't we make Kwanzaa cards? The observation of Kwanzaa has fallen off a little bit. But that doesn't mean it's dead. There's still around 9 million people that are observing it in America. 
I knew Kwanzaa existed, but I wasn't exactly sure what it was, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to put this holiday on there. And in my research for pop culture, I realized there wasn't a ton of movies that depicted any references to Kwanzaa either. And if there were, I just couldn't find them. Uh, so I decided to find, or I did find, the episode of the Rugrats entitled The Kwanzaa Special. And they do talk about Kwanzaa. And uh, I, I have not seen this episode, but I did read a little synopsis of it so it seemed like it was a really good depiction of what Kwanzaa could Kwanzaa was mm -hmm. um in a surprisingly unexpected package of it being Rugrats so go there yeah yeah <laughs> interesting yeah December 28th is National Card Playing Day now, cards were first invented in 9th century AD during the Tang Dynasty of China the first reference to a card game comes from the collection of Miscellanea Du Yang where the princess Tong Cheng played cards with 868 other people. <laughs> all of wow. them in her husband's family. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's widely believed that these games were trick-taking games, kind of like bridge, but the cards themselves also functioned as paper money, which is also why they were outlawed for gambling. From there, the playing cards spread across Persia and Egypt to Florence, Italy, where we get our modern suits of cups, coins, swords, and uh, polo sticks, which became hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. However, it didn't stop there. It also got sent from there to Japan, where Japan would create their own card games of Karuta and Hanafuda. And in 1889, a little company named Nintendo opened its doors by producing cards for these games. Oh, well, look at that. And that's also why Nintendo made Nintendo Labo by folding paper. Mm. It's a reference to their beginnings as a card game. Connections. Mm-hmm. What you got for me? Well, I have my favorite trilogy, although I'm only going to talk about one of them, and that is the Ocean's Eleven mm. trilogy. Uh, one of my faves, It. I am going to talk about Ocean's Thirteen, though, because we're going to talk about cards, and there is a whole thing. They're trying to pull off a con. I'm not going to tell you what it is in case you haven't seen the movie, but one of the things is they are trying to trick the card shuffling machine, and they have a tech guy who, who is supposed to be good at these kind of things. It's having issues with it. But it's all about, like, how do you take the house when they're playing blackjack, and etc. So I'm offering that as cards. It's also gambling, Las Vegas casinos. Mm -hmm. I really do like these movies a lot because they, the way they're written and then the characters are just so fun. And every time you watch it, there is something different that you find that mm -hmm. is just gold. Mwah. Yeah, heist movies are really only good when they have lots of heart. And lots of stuff hidden in the characters that yes, are in every single shot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. December 30th, National Bacon Day. Mm, bacon. An entire day for salt-cured pork strips. Yes. Uh, the word derives from Old German bachel, meaning buttock. Uh, despite its association with pig, any meat prepared the same way is technically bacon. So mm. turkey bacon is still bacon. Uh, soy it's bacon. still tasty. Yeah. And uh, soy bacon is also technically bacon, if you really hate life. <laughs> <laughs> I have had that. Also mm -hmm. tasty. You can celebrate this day by eating bacon. Or perhaps finding a restaurant that might be running a bacon and beer tasting night, as they started doing. Be careful, though. As of December 2016, the U.S. National Frozen Pork Belly Inventory was reported being its lowest in 50 years. Well, that's too bad. If you run out of bacon, I give you bacon. In the form of Kevin Bacon. Wow. I know that's not necessarily what this holiday is all about. But there's so many movies with bacon. Right. So I'll give you my favorite Kevin Bacon movie, which is Apollo 13. And which, and here's the weird connection. I don't know if you guys know what astronauts actually eat is more like a sometimes jerky and freeze-dried food. So therefore, bacon, very close to jerky. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know it's not exactly movies about bacon, but it is about bacon. Enjoy your bacon. So you might be going, hey, you know what? December 31st, that, that's New Year's Eve, right? Wrong! It's Hogmanay. Deal with it. Okay, there are 12 different ways to actually say the name of this holiday. And nobody knows where the word came from. There, there's French, there's German, there's all sorts of different ones. I have never heard of this before. 
You've never heard of Hogmanay? Never heard of Hogmanay. I, I've actually, I'm kind of surprised on that one. It began as a celebration of the winter solstice among the Norse, but then they decided they were going to take some Gaelic Samhain and throw that in there, and some Scottish Daft Days, throw that in there, and now they have Hogmanay. It's celebrated on New Year's Eve, and it's actually where we get the custom of singing Auld Lang Syne at midnight. Hmm. I, I know about old music, but I don't know a lot about that carol, and that was actually a carol that I wanted to learn more about. Yeah. So, yeah. It actually comes from that. Uh, there's a lot of other customs on Hogmanay. It involves, like, uh, making a ball out of chicken wire and newspaper and putting it on a rope and lighting it on fire. Yeah. Swinging it around your head, running up and down the streets at midnight. <laughs> This is, I think this we can is do dangerous. That. Do that. This is really dangerous. And then you <laughs> chuck it in the nearest body of water. Oh, we have one of those. We could do that too. Yeah. You can see festivities just like these streamed live from Stonehaven, Aberdeenshire in Scotland. Oh, we need to watch this. This sounds like so much fun. A whole bunch of maniacs running up and down the street with balls of fire over their head. <laughs> this sounds awesome. <laughs> So, you got anything on Hogmanay? I actually kind of have two. So, the first one is a movie that is a stop-motion animated movie called Haunted Hogmanay. It is uh, starring Peter Capaldi, which Mm -hmm. is the doctor before the female doctor. Uh, And I have never seen it, nor can you really watch it anywhere anymore. I had to dig really deep to find this movie. But there is one that exists, and it does talk about Hogmanay. So, interesting. there you go. But my second offering is really straight up New Year's Eve, and I'm going to give you When Harry Met Sally, because we're going to talk about Auld Lang Syne. So, it works for that also. So, Mm -hmm. there's two. Watch When Harry Met Sally this New Year's Eve. Okay. So, that wraps up everything for this year. But we're not quite done yet. We want to give you something to prepare for next year. And on January 2nd, 1920, Isaac Asimov was born. His writings formed the foundation, see what I did there? Yeah. Of science fiction as we know it. Asimov also created the three rules of robotics, which is still being referenced today in the creation of self-piloting cars. So whether you're a fan of Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, or The Last Starfighter, gather together and enjoy some speculative fiction, films, novels, and artwork. Well, that is our December and one January holiday, because we know that the next time we do this, we'll probably not make the first part of January. So we needed to cover it all if you like that we're doing this all in one month let us know uh give us some feedback about all of this and if you like how we're doing it uh we would like to know more from you but that is all we have for today so we are sending you peace hope joy and love and until next time stay zany bye-bye